Hi there everybody. Today we are going to quickly go over how to set up a PowerSchool parent portal account and how to link your students to your account so you can see their grades and their attendance data and other things. So the first thing we're going to need to gather up are the letters that came home with your student either on the first day of school or at enrollment time or maybe you received it in the mail but you should have received a letter that contains your student's name along with an access ID and an access password. Now you likely got one of these for each of the students in your household and if you have multiple letters for instance we have Johnny test and Sally test here we can gather those all up at once and we can enter this information all at the same time so we can link all of our students to our parent portal account all at once. Now something to quickly point out any person who has the access ID and access password for these students can link the students to their parent portal so they can see their grades and attendance and other data. So if mom wants to create an account, she can link these uh, students to her account. And if dad also wants to create his own account, he can also use the same access ID and password to link the students to his account. If you want to give this letter to someone else to see the student information, you can. For instance, if grandma wants to create an account, you can link the students to her account as well. So once we've gathered our student letters up, we are going to go to a web browser and we are going to open nashanik.powerschool.com. So in a web browser, just type in nashanik.powerschool.com. And it's easiest if you do this from a laptop or a desktop computer first. After we fill this all out the first time, we'll see how we can use the mobile app uh, for a little bit of a different experience but it's a little bit easier to do this on a desktop or a laptop at first so if this is the first time you've been here you haven't logged into the PowerSchool parent portal before uh, we're going to create an account so we'll click on create an account and then this blue button down here that says create an account and once we arrive at this page we can start putting in some basic information about ourselves so I'm gonna put in some test data here we need to put in an email address here and it has to be an email address we can check pretty easily because we will be receiving a confirmation code by email here that we'll see in just a minute so put it in there twice now we have to choose a desired username and I would generally recommend here you just use your email address as your username that way you don't have to remember something separate as the username so just enter your email address again now it's time to choose a password and we have to choose a password that's somewhat complex and you will get a little indicator over here just to the right of your password that shows you if the password you've chosen is strong enough so uh, keep typing a strong password until you get something that registers as strong or better. Okay, so if you don't see green over here, you have to keep typing until you get a better password. All right, now we're going to open up our letters. We're going to go back to our letters and we're going to find our student's name. And we're going to type that in here exactly as it appears on our letter. So our first one here, Johnny Test, we're going to type that in. Okay, then we come back to our letter and we use the access ID for Johnny Test. And we look at our letter one more time and we're going to put in the password exactly as it appears there for our student. Okay, make sure you get that correct. And by the way, you don't need to use these passwords again after we're done. All we need to do is use this access ID and password to link a student to our account in a somewhat secure manner. We don't have to memorize these access IDs or passwords. Okay, if you have any other students, you can add them at this time as well. So I also have Sally test in our letter here. And I have an access ID for Sally and finally the password for Sally. Okay, if I had any others, I would also add them here. Now, a quick word of caution here. If something goes wrong with this form, if something is not a valid response, the form will tell you at the top if something is wrong. But you should know that if something is wrong, it will wipe out the password here, 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 
it will wipe out all these passwords. So if you've uh, submitted something that's not quite right, it will wipe out those passwords and you have to type them back in again when you resubmit. So just uh, keep that in mind. Okay, now that we have our student access codes added, we are going to push the enter button all the way down here at the bottom and we get a congratulations notification here and we are instructed to check your email for a link to verify the account. So we're going to give that a minute to come in. Sometimes it takes one or two minutes to come in and be sure to check that spam or junk mail folder. Sometimes it does get caught in there. So let's check our email here and we see here that our email has arrived so let's go ahead and check that and inside this email we have a link that we're gonna to click to verify our account so once we've clicked that link now we can log in to the parent portal again with the email address slash username that you chose in the previous step we're gonna put in our password that we created and we're gonna go ahead and sign in and we can see here that once we log in we start to see some data about our students so I'll point out here that at the top we have Johnny who's showing up first but I also have Sally here because I also registered Sally at the same time so if I click Sally I can flip over and see Sally's information now feel free to explore around the parent portal and see what information is available depending on what part of the school year uh, we are currently in you may see more or less data here so for instance if you are at the very beginning of the school year you may not see grades or attendance information yet but as the students start to attend classes and complete assignments and receive report cards you will see grades starting to fill in as well as attendance information so I would encourage you to click around and explore that a little bit now I'll draw your attention briefly down here to this account preferences area so if we needed to add additional students to our account in the future we could click this account preferences button here on the left and we pop over to the students tab you will see I currently have Johnny test and Sally test if I enroll another student here next year I, I add another kindergartner coming in I will get another one of these letters with an access ID and an access password I can click the add button here and we have our familiar form fields where we can add another student so we have that ability at any time something that is very important to check uh, if this is the first time you've logged into the parent portal is the student contacts to see who's on file as a contact for your student and we do that by going to the forms section right here so we're gonna go down to forms here and we'll give that a second to pop up and under the general forms tab we have a few forms here for returning students and one of those is a contacts update so we're gonna click on the student contacts update and allow that to come up and let me point out something about contacts here you will see that there is a contact card for each of the contacts that is currently on file for your student so we see here we have Patrick test who's listed as the father of this student we have Janet test who's listed as the mother of this student now if your student was already in the system and this is the first time you've ever logged in to the parent portal you may also see a duplicate contact down here that says Patrick test here because I just now created an account to log in as Patrick test and you will see that this account has data access down here at the bottom now data access means access to this parent portal to see all the information that is in here so don't worry if you see this duplicate down here and eventually uh, these duplicates will be merged together so the system will see that this is Patrick test who is the same Patrick test here and will merge these together so if you see that duplication down there don't worry about that that'll take care of itself later but I would encourage you to look around and see what information is on file so if we click this little pencil here we can open up the details about each contact we can see the name gender relationship employer etc at the top there and then I'm going to draw your attention down to the address area we have an existing address here that's considered the home address we can edit that address by clicking on the pencil or we can add additional addresses here if we want to so each contact can have multiple addresses 
Uh, something that you might see in here though is the address type. So if you are having multiple addresses for a contact, make sure you choose an address type. For instance, a home and a mailing address. Those are the two most common. Okay. So then let's move down to the phone numbers. A contact may have multiple phone numbers. So you can see we have this fake phone number in here for Patrick Test. If I want to edit that, I can. Or if I want to add an additional phone number, I can put that in here. And I can choose the type of phone number. And I can put in a phone number here whatever we want there. Now this allow SMS check checkbox that just means do we allow text messages to be sent to this phone. So if this is a mobile number we can check this box to allow short message service or text messages to be sent to that phone. So I'll go ahead and add that and now you can see we have two phone numbers for this contact. We can have as many as we want. Same with email addresses. If we are putting an email address in we do need to choose one that is set to the current email address. One always needs to be the current address. If you add multiple email addresses here you can set them to be additional addresses but at least one needs to be the current address. Okay, now down here at the bottom, we are going to set the permissions for this contact. And they're somewhat self explanatory here. So, does this contact live with the student? Yes. In this case, uh, we are also an emergency contact for this student. Does this contact have custody of this student? This one's marked yes. Can this contact pick up the student from school? It's marked yes. And then down here, the receives mail. Do you receive mail? on behalf of the student that may contain student records or anything related to the student's enrollment in school would come to any contact who is set to receive mail. Now here's a nice little feature down here. If you have multiple students on this account, you can apply these settings to all of those students at once. So for instance, right now we were only working on the contact for Johnny test, but the system knows that Sally test is also part of this household. So if we want to apply these adjustments to Sally's file as well, we can certainly do that here. So we'll click add and we have updated Patrick test here. I can do the same updates for anyone who is on file. I can change the permissions. I can add additional contacts here if I like. I can have unlimited contacts. So feel free to add as many as you like. So now I'll just point out this data access icon. The data access icon is only activated when you've used the letter that contains the student's access ID and password that we had to type in at the beginning here. So you do not have the ability to turn data access on and off from here. That only happens when you use the letter that came home from school or you received at the time of enrollment. Now once I've made all my adjustments to all the contacts, if I like, I can apply all those contact adjustments to all the students that are linked to my account all at once, just like we've been able to do for the individual contacts. We can do those for the whole pile of contacts here. We can check this box for Sally test as well. And once we submit, it will apply that information to all the students. So you don't have to keep doing this for every student in the household. So now I will click submit. And we have our little confirmation message here. I'll click OK. Now we get a warning. Don't panic. This warning is just telling you that the form is pending approval. So for compliance reasons, changes to student contact information do need to be reviewed by an administrator. So once you submit this update to the contacts list, uh, a notice will go to the central registrar who will review the contact changes and will have the uh, opportunity to either approve them or reject them. So if the form is approved with all the contact changes approved, you will see this form switch to the approval state. You'll get a little green indicator that says approved. If it is rejected, you'll receive an update with some comments as to why it was rejected. What was the reason for the rejection? Usually it's just to correct a little something on the contact form. So if you pop back over to your forms icon here, you will see that we currently now have our contacts update is pending review. 
While we're on this page, I'll just draw your attention to this little cog or gear icon up here that sets our uh, preferences for our forms. If I click this little icon, you will see an option that says enable parent notifications. Now for certain forms, you can choose yes here and you can add a notification email here to get a notification when your form has a change in status. So when the form has been uh, updated to be approved or possibly rejected, you will receive an update here by email. So any email addresses that you fill in here, you can have a comma separated list, uh, will receive an, a notification for forms that require uh, some sort of approval. So I would encourage you to set that in there if you want to receive updates. Before we wrap up this video, I want to draw your attention down here to the lower left where it indicates we can get a mobile app where we can use our mobile device to review all the information that is available in PowerSchool. So if you go to the Apple Store or Google Play and you download the PowerSchool app, you will need this code right here, this district linking code. So the first time you launch the PowerSchool mobile app, it will ask you for a district code. If you put this code in, it will link you to Nishanik and then you will be able to log in with the account that you've created here and you will see all of the same information but it's it's a more mobile friendly format the user experience is a little bit nicer on the mobile format the way they have it laid out if you have any questions about setting up PowerSchool or getting the mobile app or linking your student accounts to your portal feel free to email us at powerschool at ntsd dot org.